It would be really handy if you had a pen and paper or laptop, computer, whatever you want to use, to take down some notes at this point, because you need to reflect back over them and then to analyse and expand some um, in greater depth. Before we get into this exercise, I'd like to share with you a quote from a queer theory book I read some time ago, but sadly can't remember which book it was, where the author said that we need to think not just outside the box, but think as though the box doesn't even exist. And that's what you're going to need to do with this exercise. Let your mind wander as far as possible. To start off this exercise, I'd ask you to consider some healthcare issues relevant to your own specific professional field of practice, which highlight alternative ways that people can think about a topic. So, for example, this might include um, highlighting different perspectives or understandings on something, or considering ethical or legal dimensions of care as well. Now, the topics you think about might be from a whole range of issues on end-of-life matters. Or it could be to do with political issues, such as a pay gap or promotion distortion within healthcare services. Or abortion, female genital cutting or mutilation. Um, what about people... Uh, who are often seen to self-inflict injury upon themselves, such as through excessive alcohol drinking or obesity. Then there are the recent debates about um, physician-assisted suicide or euthanasia, or it could be to do with ethical or scientific re research, whether research is as ethical as it intends to be. And then different types of healthcare shortages, whether this is shortages of medications because of underfunding or shortages of staff, and the impact this has on patient care. Now look back over your list and choose maybe one or two that you'd like to explore and to critique in greater depth. And remember, think as well outside the box, uh, or even as though the box doesn't exist on this. So let your mind flow, go with it, whatever you're thinking. Now, once you've started exploring the topic or issue in more depth and starting to pick it apart to analyse it, maybe also ask yourself whether there's, there's any impact on the particular issue you're thinking about from various pillars of society. So is this topic that you're thinking about influenced by the construction in the way in which we think within our given culture and society? And if you're wondering what those pillars are, in so many societies there are seven key pillars of state. And what I'd suggest to you those pillars represent, first of all, various religions. So many of our societies have emanated out of strict religious beliefs. And those religions often have um, laws or uh, commandments, prescriptions that people need to follow. Then as many states move away from a separation of religion to state, um, look at the ways in which so many of those laws are then enshrined by the political systems. And not just enshrined by them, but enforced in law, um, whether by the lawmakers or the law enforcers. So in healthcare, think of issues like abortion through to euthanasia. Think of things like ethical procedures governing research. And another one of these pillars of society that often impacts on each and every one of us is to do with education, whether that's education of us as little children and as we progress through that, or education and even job attainment afterwards. So uh, looking at the way in which there are certain privileges and abilities and an eliteness with different types of education, which conversely may discriminate against others. And healthcare in itself is a particular pillar, especially medicine and the branch of medicine, which is psychiatry. Look how so much of mental illness um, has obviously been defined by psychiatry, but look at the crossover between illegality um, or criminal activity when people who are homeless, for example, uh, because of mental health issues, may be put in custodial settings rather than healthcare settings. And in each state, the powers of the state um, as exercised through military services. So whether the military, the police or any other forms that, in, uh, the, that protect and support the laws enacted, whether through religions, through politics or through lawmakers. So the 
power of the state through its militia services. And finally, the last pillar shown here is the media. Look at the way in which our media, even here in the UK, is often seen as being biased in favour of some. Now, when you look at some of these images that are on the screen here, look at the, um, the privilege that's going on and consider this from the different point of view of ethnicities, genders, ages. So it's the media that perpetuate all of these pillars. And look how these various pillars of state are the ones that decide what they consider to be right and wrong, good or evil. And they're the ones that will protect the rights of some and uh, discriminate against others. And what you need to do in your analysis is to pick out um, all these different forms of discrimination and try to understand the power dynamics that actually lead to them. And another useful word in epistemological thinking is intersectionality. So look at the intersection, the crossover between what you've been considering from the seven uh, pillars of a society and how that can have different impact on people all according to their gender, ethnicity, even sexuality, abilities and anything that makes one person different to another. Don't forget to give us feedback on your exercise. So when you go back into Moodle, go into the forum for this specific week and then give us some ideas about the types of things that you've been thinking about. And hopefully we can all get into some meaningful debate on this and actually help each other to explore even further. Thanks.